iPhone 15 Pro Max versus 14 Pro Max on 17.4.1 speed test. Let's go ahead and begin with a boot up in three, two, and go and see which one can get there first. So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. The aim of this video today is to kind of share with you where the 14 Pro Max stands. I was actually researching the market yesterday and the 14 Pro Max, while being a pretty similar phone, is around $400 or $500 cheaper, depending on where you look, and it boots up faster in that case than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. That could change depending, but these phones, besides of their weight, are pretty darn similar phones, similar size and statures. Um, of course, we have the more durable, a stainless steel on the right, but also the lighter weight and sleek looking titanium on the left. Which one do you prefer in that sense? Drop it down below in the comments. All right guys, so let's go ahead and check face ID on both of these phones and you can see they unlock at exactly the same time. So we're not gonna go on and on about that. Let's go ahead and confirm the software on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You can see iOS 17.4.1. And then over here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, iOS 17.4.1. You can see there's a reduction in bezels, but in terms of just the general user speed day to day, I don't really feel any difference whatsoever. And it doesn't seem to be changing at all. So I really recommend a 14 Pro Max right now if you're trying to save a buck, but you still want a pro level iPhone. It's still very, very smooth. All right, guys, so we have arrived at the app test. Everything is closed out for both. Let's go into Groupon. You can see launching first there on the right. Let's go ahead in the blue man group. Pretty much the same in these sub menus. Um, let's go ahead and click something else about a membership package. You can see once in sub menus, pretty much the same scrolling across both. I don't see a major difference here and click on some categories. Pretty much the same there. Let's go ahead and bring it into X. Going into X, I think it was slightly faster on the left to load. And then overall, not a major deal of difference there. Let me swipe up out of there. We're gonna go into Instagram and some new OnePlus products. Let's go over here to, over here to my page. While I'm back home, let's see what Flossie's up to. Quick Sony drop. So let's get up out of there. Let's go ahead and just click another sub menu. How about OnePlus? You can see some visuals, some light and shadow. And we'll head up out of there. We're gonna go into Amazon. And you could see faster there on the right. Swipe up out of there. We're gonna go into Starbucks on both. And faster on the left. Let's head up out of there. How about Jetpack Joyride? So now we're getting into the games. Again, casual game, Easter theming. You can see right there faster on the left. So maybe the games will boost ahead. Subway Surfers for the 15 Pro Max. Bang, there we go on the 15 Pro Max. So that was a pretty decent load time speed upgrade on the left there. I'm gonna get in the comments. One or two seconds, I'll keep my $400. Well, you do that, sir. Let's go into Temple Run 2. But I'll take the extra speed when we're playing Resident Evil and stuff like that. You'll see faster here on the left. Yep, this is where um, you're getting the improvement in the games. Let's hit play, especially in the load times and probably even in the more intensive uh, GPU tasks or when you need that power. Um, pretty neat. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2 and see what we're rocking with here. And this usually takes a little longer to load. And this game, again, super old game, but it's still a decent test. You can see a little faster on the left. Let's go to Free Fire. Let's go to Free Fire. I think I said left. <laughs> I'm talking too fast. You could see, um, here we go on the left. So once you start loading into the games that require just a little more oomph, we're gonna take it on the 15 Pro Max. Heading up out of here, we'll go to PUBG Mobile. Now in PUBG, it's gonna be based on who gets a lobby first. So we're just gonna load it up here. So we're not gonna go into the match because the match is gonna be dictated based on the servers and who's matching up. So I'm just gonna get to the lobby here, see which one could do this quicker. And looks like the iPhone 15 Pro Max is in a slight lead. Yes, it is, there we go. 
Um, I don't think it's enough though. I don't think it's enough to like, if you're a better player in PUBG on 14 Pro Max, you're still gonna beat the player on a 15 Pro Max. Cause sometimes you have um, a little advantage cause your phone is faster, but in this case, I don't think it's gonna be an advantage there. If, you're, if the player you're playing is much better than you. Let's hit my results. Let's go to benchmarks. And we're gonna, actually you can see the last time I did this, I think this test was way back in September 27th. It could be that one. I'm not sure, it was one of these, but it was definitely lower than the 15 Pro Max. I actually have to move N22 right here. Let's go ahead and hit N22 on both. Faster on the left. We're going to speed test. Faster on the left. Geekbench 6, faster on the right. So this app was actually optimized properly. You can see we went to eight gigs of RAM versus six gigs of RAM. And we're gonna go into InShot here. And that one launched nearly identical. And we'll go to iMovie. Now I am gonna do a video render later in this video, so stay tuned. But you could see in timeline, pretty much the same performance. Not gonna be any real issues. So in that app test, I would say the 15 Pro Max has a slight jump, um, especially on the games. It can launch those games, load them games faster. So if you game, the 15 Pro Max is worth it. Like if you game heavily, that's your thing you do on your phone. You love gaming, you're gonna love the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You'll still love the 14 Pro Max. It can do most of everything as well. Um, it's just not gonna be as powerful in, you know, when you really start pushing it in like PUBG or in some more intensive games, you'll get better performance. You can eke out a little bit better performance on the 15 Pro Max. All right guys, so let's go ahead and see how they do on the reloads. Now eight gigs of RAM, I expect flawless. Man, look at these animations, dude. 17.4.1, these animations, do they look to me? I don't know if it's because I've been using some Androids the past couple of days, but they just look even better than before today. I don't know what it is up with it today is doing very juicy. You could see that nearly flawless. That was a flawless performer. Amazing job there on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let's get this thing into focus here. And let's go ahead and do the 14 Pro Max. Is this gonna give me the same exact? And it looks like it is. I'm starting to see why Apple doesn't keep the last year's Pro Max around because who would buy the new one if they could get this same type of phone? at a reduced price. See, that's why they get rid of these because they know they're still so good that it would just hurt the sales of the new phone. I mean, look at that. This is great. Both of these phones were like, were like a stick of butter today and a melted stick of butter, just buttery smooth. All right, so the final scores are in and you could see the 15 Pro Max has beaten the 14 Pro Max. Now there's a message that says this benchmark result may be invalid due to an issue with the timers on this system. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the average single core scores are usually around 2517 for the 14 Pro Max, which is still being beat by the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, the average score for the iPhone 15 Pro Max is around 2926 um, over here. Now, you'll see if we go to the multi core here for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the average right there is 6355 and I got a 4962. So it's about a thousand points better here on the 15 Pro Max, even if the score was better. So for this result, I didn't get the, the best result here on my 15 Pro Max, but you can see back in September of 2023, I was able to get much higher score. So maybe I have to re-download this app or something, but it is capable of something much tighter and closer, you can see right here, to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Um, so that's the A16 Bionic and this is the A17 Pro chip and that would equate to something like a 20% or so improvement for the 15 Pro Max. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Extreme, 3D Mark Extreme now, three, two, and go. And we'll see what kind of graphical performance we can get right here. I'll be back when they're done. And our final scores have arrived for 3D Mark. You can see 3601 on the left, 2608 on the right with a six frame rates per second better on the 15 Pro Max. And so you can see on 17.4.1, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is scoring better than 81% of devices. I wonder what those other 19% are. And then we have 58% on the 14 Pro Max. So definitely in the lead in the graphical performance. And that's what I was talking about in the app test. This is where the 15 Pro Max will shine. All right, so these phones feel pretty warm. Let me go ahead and test the iPhone 15 Pro Max and see what temperature we have right now. 
so we're getting around 99 degrees that's not terrible it was like 110 in the initial days let's go ahead and reset this here all right so the iphone 14 pro max around 100.2 101 yeah so the iphone um this iphone 14 pro max definitely runs a little bit warmer than the iphone 15 pro max under heavier load there about a degree warmer um that's not a terrible difference it's not really a big deal but it's slightly toastier than the iPhone 15 Pro Max under heavy load. So Apple definitely improved the heat efficiency for the 15 Pro Max, but I think they're gonna do even more heat efficiency on the next models. So let's go ahead and take a look at the speedtest.net. Let's see which one can pull in better um, internet speeds. So we'll start there and let me go get the same server here on the iPhone 15 or 14 Pro Max. It was actually on the same server. So we're pulling in somewhere around 470 megabytes down near 500, nearing 500, are we going? Yeah, we're going over. I feel like one of those guys at the auction yards who are like, going once, going twice, going once, going twice. You ever see those? And that's what I feel like I'm talking like right now with this speed test. Sold for 23, 23 FPS or 23 MBPS on the upload. Let's go ahead and check out the 14 Pro Max and see what we're getting here. And you'll see, getting close here, are we gonna go and going once, going twice? No, we're not gonna do that again. We're going up to nearly 500. I don't think it's gonna beat the 15 Pro Max. No, we're down. But can the upload do better? No, something up on my upload. So you can see definitely 21, 22. Yeah, we're not finishing. We lost on both for the 14 Pro Max. So potentially better internet speeds as well on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So we have two five minute, the same five minute clips here, 4K on both of these. And I'm gonna go ahead and export the videos. So let's go ahead and click save video in three, two, go. And see which one can finish exporting this content first. So I'll be back when they are done with the export. Okay, and as expected, the iPhone 15 Pro Max finishes first, and we're still waiting on the 14 Pro Max, and we're still waiting, and there we go. So not a major difference there, but this is only five minutes. If this clip would be 15, 20 minute video, we're probably looking at a good 30 seconds to a minute faster on the you know render for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. iMovie is a very well optimized app for Apple devices, um, but still you can see it pushed ahead in an area that really pushes the CPU a little bit more. So that's gonna wrap it up here. The iPhone 15 Pro Max with the barely edging by win in certain areas. The 14 Pro Max, still a great option to purchase right now. I think this video proves that, that you can either keep this phone or consider purchasing one now if you want to get really great performance at a reduced price over the 15 Pro Max. Also, um, I do think though that in a couple of years, the 14 Pro Max will probably be still really fast, but not gonna be quite as powerful as the new phones with the AI and stuff like that. But still, I'm pretty sure Apple's gonna bring AI to some of their older products. Hopefully they do that especially because that will make a lot of their, if they don't bring AI to the 14 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, that's gonna make those phones feel a little bit dated for sure. But thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you all on the next speed test. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.